The problem with AMC and the reason why we have not seen the short squeeze yet that we have all been waiting for that we know is coming due to the data that is reported to us. We know shorts have to cover. We know there's synthetic shares, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. We could make a three hour video talking about exactly why AMC stock will short squeeze, eventually will short squeeze. But as of recently, on Friday, you've seen a 0% change across the board. Like, nada, nada move. Throughout all of the volatility, the ups, the downs, the aftermarket, nothing. What's going on? Well, from my perspective, from where I see it, what the data is telling me is that you have seen less shorting as of lately with AMC after the short interest went from 18% now to 20%, you're seeing a little bit less shorting, but you're not seeing shorts covering. You're not really seeing a whole lot of buying volume coming in, but there still is quite a bit of large institutional puts that are being bought on AMC stock. So let's talk about the technicals, the Ortex data. Let's get back to the roots of AMC here in this video and why the risk to reward looks so enticing, potentially some trades that I might look to put on in this uh, up next upcoming week to play a longer term rally in AMC. I think at this point, with at least the options, if you were going to trade AMC, I like the longer dated options given the stock is at $6.51 per share and there's many reasons the stock should go higher from here and likely will i don't think it's worth risking a substantial amount of money on short-term options but i do think longer term options are a lot more enticing to put some larger dollar amounts on guys so let's get straight into this fifth video hopefully this video is a thousand percent winning options trade to you guys at some point in the future if you guys want another tool to add to your options trading strategies or just stock strategies whatever instrument of you know trading that you use if you want another tool and to get my trades in real time link down below in the description of this video to do so for that for the buy and sell alerts and to join a great community nonetheless let's talk about what we have in store as far as economic data as well throughout this upcoming week because this is going to be like the holy grail of weeks for the stock market basically all of 2022 has led up to this upcoming week and what i mean by that is the fed has been raising rates more and more and more aggressive throughout 2022 every month or two there's more aggressive you know hawk down on inflation kind of verbiage that has come from the fed throughout all of 2022 so it's been very hard to get a rally to actually last, even though earnings have held up very well through all of, you know, the volatility in the markets and the Fed raising rates and bad economic signs. I mean, look at real estate data that's coming out. New home sales down 20% month over month. Some of this stuff is very, very bad. Earnings have held up. The only thing to give is still the Fed. And coming on November 2nd, the markets are now expecting the Fed to come out and to tell us that we're only expecting a 50 basis point rate hike at the December 14th meeting. Now, the margins here are still very close. About 48.2% of markets are expecting a 50 basis point rate hike. Still, 43.4% of market participants are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike. And if the Fed goes ahead with another 75 basis point rate hike or signals that to markets in December, we are going to be one of one, the only country that is still raising rates this aggressively that has not slowed down the pace of rate increases. So when you really encircle the Fed in this way, as far as global central banks and what they have done, I don't think it, it 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 really you know makes sense for the Fed to keep going at 75 basis points. You guys have probably heard the arguments for this, but essentially the Fed, you know, is affecting the short end of the curve. They're affecting you know short duration bonds. They're making yields go up in the short term. They're causing economic damage over the next three to 24 months based off of what they're doing 
now. So essentially, if the Fed, let's just call it, did three or four more 75 basis point rate hikes in a row, got that federal funds rate back up to about 6%, well, they would cause irreversible damage to the economy. And at this point, we've tightened enough that it makes sense to slow down, given that the federal funds rate would be at, you know, four and a half percent by this December 14th, meaning if they only did a 50 basis point rate hike. That's a lot. The markets are expecting the Fed's terminal rate based off of the FOMC minutes and the last summary of economic projections we got from the Fed. We expect the Fed to stop raising rates at 4.6%. That means that after the December Fed rate hike, if we get a 75 basis point rate hike, the markets, or at least what the Fed has told the markets, is we're done raising rates after that point. Maybe another 25 basis point rate hike, maybe to get up to 5%, but we're done at that point. I think the Fed's going to take a more longer term approach to this and go kind of more steady and slow from here since we have tightened so much and really look to see if the data is reflecting inflation coming down or anything like that and why this is important to AMC, but not only AMC to the broad markets is because, you know, like I talked about in the last video, hedge funds are not positioned for an upside move as of right now. So when we get that announcement that the Fed's you know, they're not going to cut rates. They don't want the markets to rally. They're going to say, yeah, we still have a goal to do with inflation. Inflation is still a huge problem. But at this point, we have tightened sufficiently that we can go slow and steady from here, right? That's kind of the verbiage the, the Fed's going to give us. They're going to try to give this hawkish stance still, but to give us smaller rate hikes after this next meeting. And that's something the markets are pricing in, but they're not fully pricing in, as you can see, 43% of the market still expect a 75 basis point rate hike in December. What that's going to do is really start to squeeze out shorts out of their positions because once the Fed does finally start to slow down the pace of rate increases after almost a year now of raising rates, well, that is a, a very bullish sign because the markets, they only care about what's going to happen over the next three to 12 months. If the Fed sees or the markets see the Fed slowing down now, they're going to want to get ahead of that now and they're, they are going to purchase stocks. And specifically because of how short a lot of stocks are in the markets, how short hedge funds are in the markets, that makes for a very big opportunity <coughs> potentially for AMC stock. Now let's run through all of the economic data we have for this upcoming week for at least the United States of America because yes international data is important but really you know the things that affect the markets the most is obviously this data that comes out for america now the fomc meeting goes from november 1st through november 2nd the fed will announce what they are going to do what they're going to raise rates you know what their uh, basically explanation of this is coming wednesday at 2 p.m but on the 1st, on Tuesday, you do have ISM Manufacturing PMI for October, and you have Jolt's job openings. This is important because the previous job openings was 10.053 million job openings. So we're expecting to lose about 0 .3, about 50,000 jobs, basically. Long story short, we're expecting to lose about 50,000 jobs at this next job openings, and that is expected to be a positive thing obviously we'll see what happens with that the more jobs we lose is going to probably be a more bullish thing for the markets because hey you know come in the next day after that we're gonna get the fed if they see that data that's definitely gonna, going to be something that is discussed at that fed meeting and potentially get us closer to that pivot so that will be important very important now on wednesday you have the adp employment change this is uh, something we are also expecting to go down as well. We uh, had 208,000 uh, ADP employments for the change of, uh, that was September, uh, last month. Now we're expecting 190,000. So that is expected to be bullish as well. This is the same day as the Fed meeting, the Fed interest rate decision. And like I said right here, uh, you know, uh, federal funds rate is at 3.25%. We're expecting that to go to 4%. Pretty much a done deal at this point. And then you have the Fed press conference at 2.30 p.m. And now I could go through and we will go through the, the economic data for Thursday and for Friday. But by this point, the markets are only going to care about what the Fed said. And in my personal opinion, it's probably going to be a pretty bullish move at this point because if the Fed does not come out and you know, signal smaller rate hikes to come. 
I think that's going to put us in a really bad position for the market. So this is, you know, going to be very good or it's all going to fall on its face and you're probably going to 300 on the S&P 500. It would be very, very bad if the Fed did not signal a slowdown of rate hikes at this point. It, like the markets would expect a deep, deep recession, uh, whereas a lot of the recession fears, you know, they're just fears at this point. They're not really priced into the earnings multiples at, you know, a stock like Apple trading over 24 times price to earnings. That's not expecting a recession. Not at all. So if we do get that, probably not going to be a good thing. But I think it's very unlikely that we will get a more hawkish Fed at this point i think four 75 basis point rate hikes back to back a 25 basis point hike and a 50 basis point hike is probably enough for the year um may for sure a slowdown of those 75 basis point hikes nonetheless as far as thursday you have the balance of trade for september at 8 30 in the morning as well as 10 o'clock in the morning you have ism non-manufacturing pmi this data will be important but like i said the markets will really only care about the fed as of right now now this will be important as well non-farm payrolls for october last month we had 263,000 jobs this upcoming month we're expecting 200,000. so if that is um you know coming in line with with what the expectations are 200,000 jobs that's going to be 63,000 less than last month that's going to be a very bullish very very bullish thing now the unemployment rate for october previously came in at 3.5 percent we're expecting 3.6 percent at this next upcoming reading and i think that is probably pretty likely as well uh given some of the preliminary data that we are seeing right now some of the layoffs the companies are talking about i think it's pretty likely now as far as other things you have average hourly earnings you have average hourly earnings year over year manufacturing payrolls non-farm payrolls private average weekly hours so on and so forth average weekly hours fun fact for the american workers 34 and a half hours government payrolls expected to go down by about twenty-five thousand jobs as well but like i said guys this data will be important. It will cause a move, but the biggest thing is going to be the Fed. Even if the Fed does signal slowdown to the pace of rate increases, and let's say this data came out bad. Let's say we added more jobs or, you know, the unemployment rate went down for whatever reason. Well, at that point, if the Fed gave us something bullish to stick to, I think that's what the markets are going to care about. If the data, you know, is, is positive and shows the Fed they should be slowing down and the fed also slows down well that's going to be more confirmation to the markets that this rally and uh this rally should really be happening and that hedge funds maybe we shouldn't be this short on the markets only my personal opinion obviously time will tell with all of this information but as far as amc stock it's one that you really want to watch very very closely in my personal opinion due to you know what it's really done and you know AMC is different than a, than a lot of other companies. A lot of other companies, they're zombie companies. They're just just bad, right? They 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 don't make money. They don't even have businesses in a lot of the cases, and they're probably never coming back. But something like AMC, I would put my neck out on on the line and say 10, 20 years from now, AMC AMC is probably going to be in business, and probably the stock's going to be valued more than three billion, like it currently is only my opinion so with that being said as as far as what we have for options on november 18th you do have a lot of activity uh, around the seven seven fifty eight dollar strikes all in all you have about thirty uh nine thousand or about thirty thousand uh for open interest in between seven and the eight dollar strikes the seven seven fifty and eight dollar strikes so i think if you do see that move up and you see hedge funds get a little bit less short that could be a very bullish thing for amc but given how cheap these options actually are i probably want to get some time on these options if you even look out to just call it a 15 dollar call for march 17th of 2023 a little bit longer dated of an option you can see these 15 dollar calls are only 54 dollars. and if we really get a fed pivot and you really do see some short start to cover you're gonna blow past 15 dollars like nobody's business in my personal opinion and these options could be thousands of percent winning trades or even let's just call it in my personal opinion i wouldn't go uh any 
shorter of a time frame than December 16th. And even these options are very, very attractive as well. You could get a $9 call for $47. That means by pretty much mid-November, as long as AMC makes a move up to 8 you know, seven fifty, eight dollars. You're going to make pretty much make money on these options. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, and I could all be wrong, and the markets could hit new lows. I think it's very unlikely at this point. I think it's very unlikely that something so beaten down and so shorted like AMC would not have some form of a bullish rally. I think there's no way around that. And I think that is going to happen in my personal opinion. But like I said, I do like the longer dated options as of right now. And I think I'm a bigger fan of the options right now than actually uh, buying shares. And just remember, if you guys have shares like I do, essentially when you're buying options, and the stock actually moves up, it does help out a lot to boost the stock up because a gamma squeeze can be more powerful than even a short squeeze, at least to get things rolling, to get the ball rolling. So there is that information. As far as AMC on the Ortex data, the dollar amount that is currently sold short sits at $668.13 million. The estimated short interest of free float sits at about 19.92%. The free flow out and loan sits at about 35%, 178.5 million shares that are sold short or that are out on loan, I should say. Days to cover at 4.74, cost to borrow at 18.86%, 100% share utilization. With a more live, uh, you know, more relevant cost to borrow max uh, on Friday, it was sitting at 20.14%. As far as the option activity, it's been quite mixed over the past couple of days. You've seen a lot of big put options, a lot of big call options. But on Friday, you've seen about a 60% positive order value. Six orders totaling 118 and a half thousand dollars so nonetheless you've seen more positive activity at least over the last couple of days but really there's not been a lot of option activity in general i think uh, some shorts are probably taking this opportunity not to cover on their short positions not to really buy options in a big way but potentially de-risk a little bit by actually buying some shares of amc it, it looks like a decent bet from here with a 3.36 billion dollar market cap even for a buyout at these prices i mean you're you're at bargain basement bullshit prices if i do say so myself now nonetheless that's pretty much going to be all for this video we covered a lot in a very short amount of time the biggest thing to know is really this next upcoming week it's all about the fed we do have data but literally it is all about the fed guys so you know, as far as technicals, even on the S&P 500, a lot of people do trade the S&P. I like to trade the S&P. I also like to trade the TQQQ, and that is basically the NASDAQ on steroids. That's what I've been trading, and I do still have those $25 and $30 calls. I do think those could be insanely profitable if the Fed does ultimately uh, U-turn or give us a, a slower pace of rate hikes to come at the this meeting coming on Wednesday. If you guys, like I said, want access to all of that, link down below in the description. But this rally looks like it could have some legs. It does. Comment down below what you think about this rally. Do you think it is going to continue? What do you think is going to happen with AMC? What do you think is going to happen with the markets? What do you think is going to happen with the Fed? What are your positions? Let me know that information. Do not leave us out of the loop. If you got the secret sauce, baby, we want it. Give it to us down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.